This is part four of Bayesian analysis with SPSS in which we will be looking at how we perform Bayesian analyses within the system. To begin with, we're going to be looking at a Bayesian example to compare means from two independent samples. To demonstrate our Bayesian analysis, we're actually using SPSS version 29 and we're working with a data set called News Channel. The News Channel has got this key field, which is simply whether or not the, the respondents are willing to accept a new news channel offering, which simply takes the form of presumably a subscription service, which they can access via an app or via their TV. And we can see that in terms of those who accept and those who don't accept, it's almost a 50-50 split. It's 51.4% in the no group, comprising 227 cases, and 48.6% in the yes group, 215 cases. Now, I only illustrate that because very often when we're doing frequentist analysis, and particularly when we're doing things like a independent samples t-test and frequentist analysis there are assumptions about normality but those assumptions are fairly robust or it's easy uh, the data the procedure tends to be fairly robust when you have enough cases in each group and certainly we have more than 50 cases in each group here we're well into the 200 so you know we can get away with uh, any any violations of normality when we're comparing news channel against uh, the average of some sort of independent uh, interval or scale variable and in this case we might start to hypothesize whether or not the average number of years of education for those who who accept the news channel is the same as the average number of years of education for those who don't is it is it actually the same in the population and we could do a little means test here uh, using a t-test uh, and even do a means table by going down to compare means but let's actually just run our Bayesian analysis itself and it will also give us um, uh, some means values out so we can compare the two groups. We're going to go to Bayesian statistics here, independent samples normal, which is kind of the equivalent, if you like, of the, of the independent samples t-test. You can see all the other types of uh, uh, Bayesian tests you can do here, which is a one sample t-test, effectively one sample normal one sample binomial, one for Poisson distributions, related samples for before and after situations, and independent samples because these two groups are independent one another, the yes and the no. So we'll click on that, and we'll start to specify how we want our Bayesian analysis to work. So first of all, I'm gonna say the test variable is education in years, and then the grouping variable, what the two groups we're comparing are those who accept and not, uh, who accept uh, the uh, the news channel and those who don't. I'm going to define those groups. If you can't remember what the codes are for them, just remember to right click. It's zero for no and one for yes. So we have zero and one. And then something to bear in mind is that you remember from the last video we said there's a difference between trying to estimate a parameter value, which is done by characterizing a posterior distribution, which is where um, uh, we create credible intervals and tells us what the, the parameter is likely to be. In this case, the parameter is the difference between the two groups in terms of the mean number of years of education. Is that difference one year? Is it two years? Is it smaller? Now it's 0.5 years. And it will give us credible intervals for that. That's different from estimating whether or not um, the null hypothesis that the two, the average number of years of education for the two groups is in fact the same in the population versus the alternative hypothesis that indicates that they're actually different in the population. That's a different question. And we normally would accept that. Uh, uh, we would normally look at that question by estimating a Bayes factor. But it's important to know that you can actually use both methods. And you remember also that we talked about priors and what the, what the, we have to provide a prior probability or a prior uh, distribution to do this analysis. Now, of course, it has a default setting. If we click on priors here, we can see that it's going to use what's called a non-informative prior. And it's going to assume, just by default, that the two groups don't have the same amount of variation, which is a another assumption of a, a classical frequentist t-test. And in fact, you, you find that in SPSS, it provides two t-tests for you. One, one result assuming the two groups have the same amount of variance and another result, assuming the two groups have a, have a different, differing amount of variance and adjusts for that. So we're going for a non-informative prior here 
where we're assuming that the two groups don't have the same standard deviation, if you like, same variance, and we're asking it to estimate both the Bayes uh, factor and to give us credible intervals by characterizing the posterior distribution and telling us you know, how, what's our most likely value for the difference between the two groups, assuming there is a significance difference, if you like, between, between uh, those who accept the news channel and those who don't in terms of their mean number of years of education. So we'll click OK and have a look at the results of that. So just looking at the initial output here, we can see that the first table we get is a descriptive statistics table simply telling us what, what the mean values are for the two groups. So for those who, who won't accept the new uh, service offering, the mean number of years of education they have is 13.2. And for those who are willing to accept it, it's 13.56. So the difference is really small. Yes, those who accept the new service offering have slightly more years of education on average than those who don't, but it's only 0.36 years of education. So it's not massive. And as a result of that, when we look at the Bayes factor, which is the first kind of Bayesian bit of output we see, we see a value of 5.172. So let's call it five. What we're basically saying here is that we are five times more likely to see a difference as in inverted commas as large as that under the null hypothesis uh, rather than under the alternative hypothesis. So it's indicating that there's more evidence or at least moderate evidence for the null hypothesis being true since we are five times more likely to see a difference of that magnitude under the null hypothesis. Um, it's po important to point out we actually have a significance test added on the end, the end here. This is, this is completely independent. This is a frequentist uh, t-test and it's simply supporting that, saying that, you know, there's a probability of 0.167 of getting a result as extreme as the one observed, assuming the null hypothesis is true, leading us to uh, not reject the null hypothesis. It simply says you can't reject it. It doesn't say anything about the alternative, whereas Bayes factor is comparing evidence for the alternative versus evidence for the, uh, for the null. And we are effectively concluding as a result of this that, yeah, there doesn't look like there's much difference between the average number of years of education uh, for those who accept the news channel uh, offering versus those who do uh, in the population. The next thing we get is our ability to try and characterize this difference, to try and estimate, if you like, um, what this mean difference is, or where it's likely to lie, this parameter value. And it's saying the mean here is 0.36, which you can see here uh, above here. And the mode, what it says is that the mode is also 0.36. Why does it mean, why does it talk about a mode? We'll come to that in a second. The key bit here is that we have 95% credible intervals, not confidence intervals, credible intervals. So it's saying that there is a 95% chance that the true mean difference between these two groups is anywhere between minus 0.15, a minus number, and a positive number of 0.8. Eight, six. So it could be anywhere along that continuum, indicating that it straddles the zero. So it could be zero, which again supports our conclusions about, you know, there isn't, there isn't a lot of evidence to support the alternative hypothesis. Rather, uh, there's more evidence to support the null hypothesis. And these little charts at the bottom simply tell us what's going on. So first of all, we have the log likelihood. This is referring to the data. So it's referring to effectively the distribution uh, of values that could lie within the no group and the yes group. And if we were to kind of find the peak of that, that, that point in each of these groups here, it would be round about our average values here, which we're seeing off about, was that 13.2 and 13.56. So that's just our, our, our peak value, if you like. And the next one is the prior. Now remember the prior itself was a non-informative prior. And it's simply saying here, because it's flat, it's saying that, well, look, any difference, remember, this is the difference, not the not the value, not the actual mean value, but the difference between the, the, the mean. So it's saying this difference could be could be anywhere. It's, it's all equally likely. Hence, it's a flat, it's a flat distribution because it's saying uh, I'm going to assume that any difference from minus 0.25 up to one is equally likely. That's my prior, uh, uh, my prior distribution. And then the posterior course is our posterior distribution off the mean itself and saying look I think this mean difference could be somewhere along this point this is relating to our credible intervals up here 
and hence if we were to find that the average in this in this distribution here it would come out as 0.36 and the most common value which would be the very peak of the distribu distribution would also be the modal value which is also 0.36 and this is the default output for our independent samples normal Bayesian uh, statistical test where we are effectively concluding that there isn't a lot of evidence to show that people who, who do accept the news channel service offering have uh, a different uh, average number of years of education from those who don't in the population. Returning to the data editor, we can actually rerun that analysis, but this time we can choose a different test variable. Instead of comparing the average number of years of education for the two groups, why don't we compare the average ages? So I'm just gonna call up my dialog recall button here and swap out education and years for age and years. Again, we're using a non-informative prior. We don't actually know what the, what the difference is between these two groups in terms of ages. It might be different, it might be exactly the same. But we're gonna run the analysis and see what the results show. And this time, the difference is somewhat more marked. So we can see that from the group statistics here that the average age of people who aren't interested in the uh, in the uh, new service is actually 35.8, that's called 36. And for those who are, it's actually 44.8, so let's call that 45. That's a mean difference of nine years. This time the Bayes factor looks like it's close to zero. Now remember, the smaller the number, or certainly less than zero, uh, the more likely it is true that the alternative hypothesis is supported. So what we're saying is that a really small number means that the chance of the null hypothesis being true compared to the uh, to the alternative hypothesis is really quite small. So I can see here it's really, really very, very small. It's, it's this is with ten decimal places. If I highlight this and actually add and increase the number of decimals, you can see how small this number is. This is a tiny fraction, and it's saying you know this is how likely the null hypothesis is versus the alternative hypothesis. This time we're concluding that there isn't a lot of evidence to support the null hypothesis and rather in fact there's more evidence you're more likely to get a result as extreme as one observed under the alternative hypothesis again this is actually supported by the independent samples t-test which is frequentist t-test which is actually telling us to to reject the null hypothesis because we're getting a, a significance value two-tailed significance here less than point zero zero one but remember this is independent of the bayesian analysis and again with regard to estimating the parameters, with the parameter that we had, the mean here was nine. Uh, our, our credible intervals here say that um, the true parameter value could be anywhere, 95% probability, anywhere between 6.57 and 11.49. Again, we have a flat prior distribution where each, uh, each difference value, each difference in the, in, the, in the two means is equally likely and we have a posterior distribution which plots the difference uh, in, in age, in mean year years, and showing that nine, a value of 9.03 is the most commonly occurring and is the average. So again, a different situation from previously. This time we're actually going to uh, find more evidence to support the alternative hypothesis that the two, the two groups have a different age profile in the population.